Chicago Urban Sketchers Group has just published its first book, which is called Urban Sketching, Disappearing Landmarks in Toronto. Mary Judith Jean-Louis founded the group, and she's with me now. Hello. Hello. Um, did I say your name right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, good. It's a French name, so it's a little... I know I was saying, so I realized that as I was getting halfway through it. I thought, should I read my faux accent or something? So tell me about this group you, you, you started. You, you, you moved here from Montreal. Yes, well, I'm originally from Montreal. I lived in, in Ottawa for a little bit, and then after four years, we decided to move to Toronto. And I was introduced to the Toronto to the Urban Sketchers maybe a couple months before moving to Toronto. And... I was looking for a group there and they couldn't find one. So they told me if you don't find a group in Toronto, just start your own. So I started my own. So what what is urban sketching? Urban sketching is basically sketching on location. So artists or hobbyists, just people that love to sketch, just go to different areas wherever they travel and you just sketch what they see as a way to tell a story of what's around them. All right. Um, what are some of exa- examples of the, the landmarks? Like, How do you choose? Do you, do you sort of read the news and say, okay, this yeah. is going to go soon, and so we should go get it? Yeah? Yes, yes. We read the news. We went through uh, different websites and blogs that were talking about uh, builders that are going to acquire different buildings. Sometimes you can see in the comment people complaining about them. So we kind of put a list together of the ones that were online, and we just went and visited them and started to sketch them. All right. So which uh, can you give me some examples of what you would sketch? Uh, the Captain John restaurant boat was one of the example um the uh, honest ed which is a big landmark in toronto that's going to change the condo so little place the cookbook store as well so places like this and sometimes it's places that are close to some of the sketchers they just hear in the news look the local news that the place is going to shut down i think the o'connor bowls was one of them and they just told us that this place is closing soon so some of the sketchers that could go just went and sketched the building okay the, the it sounds very strange to think of somebody who likes art sketching buildings. So, I mean, I have a question, million questions to ask you. So, first of all, um, do you look at them as art or as a document, uh, as a documentary, or is or you try both? Okay, both, both. Because I mean, the building tell a story. Um, a lot of the time, there it brings memory to a lot of people, and even when we sketch on location. Um, passerbys obviously see a group of people just sitting down looking at a building sketching. They're going to tell us stories <laughs> about what the building meant to them or what used to happen in these places and things like that. So yeah, and the architecture itself, they're really cool shapes and when we can put like the people around them or the, the, the greenery around them, we have like a better understanding of the place of that building in its environment. So do you do research or do you just go there and kind of feel the life of it and try to portray that? Because th- these are beautiful pictures. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we do a little bit of both depending on, on who's doing it, how we feel. Uh, there's a little bit of research that we're done to be able to find out which building we're on their way or disappearing or disappearing. And But it's also mostly about how we feel about it. And what the thing is, when different sketchers sketch the same building, you're going to see that they pick up something different from the building that they see, which is always a fun thing for me to see. Yeah, it's true. Um, what is the fascination with the disappearing landmarks as opposed to the just landmarks that are there? I mean, although I'm just sure you sketch those too, but <laughs> sketch both. that's the, the focus of this but book. For the book, we're looking for something interesting and it brings so much um, emotion, especially looking through the posts and so much stories that it, it felt like it was a good way to kind of keep a memento of these buildings. I mean, even though some of these buildings probably should go down because they're, they're completely dilapidated and stuff like that, but it still has a history. It's part of the history of Toronto, and we kind of wanted to keep a little memory of that through our eyes, basically. Okay. Um, what do these pieces that are coming and going tell us about the city? The fast-moving pace of Toronto, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was for me. That's that's what I mean. It's it moves a lot, but it also kind of the, the funny thing, for example, about the um, the planetarium. Um, that it's a really cool building. I don't think there's going to be any other building with like a giant dome on top of them um, that's going to be built anytime soon. But a lot of people had never noticed the building. Some of our sketchers, they're like, I pass by all the time. I never noticed the building before. Right. So it kind of brings um, a way for people to take another look at their city and see the beauty that's around them and see what's what's going on. Because a lot of time people just pass by and they don't pay attention to where they live, where they walk, where they are. So, tell me about the book. The book? Uh, the book, we just wanted to do something to, to keep it in, to do something fun. And uh, we kind of put it all together. And fortunately, there's ways nowadays to be able to publish your own book. So we self-published a book ourselves. How many artists? There's 21 artists. I'm missing a couple. We'll have to do a uh, 
revision two, but there's 21 artists that participated this time. It's really wonderful. You came from Montreal, which yes. I think of as a beautiful city. I lived there for a year. <laughs> um, and I would think that you come, maybe it's just, again, taking my own city for or the city that I've lived in for 30 years for granted. But coming from Montreal, what is beautiful about uh, Toronto or what has struck you about Toronto? Oh, so many things. To me, is I love the fact that it's, it's moving all the time. It's very multicultural. And there's a lot of... When you start looking, there's a lot of really cool historical building throughout the entire city. Some, like we saw, that are disappearing, but yeah, there's a lot of really great things. And the thing is, there's something for everybody in Toronto. That's something that I noticed. Yeah. Whether you're more into like nature, you have High Park, you have the beaches. If you want to be in the bustling city, you can go downtown and you can go to um, uh, the, uh, the the market. Yeah, I forget the name. St. Lawrence? Yes. And the other one too. Ah, the hippie market area. Kensington, Kensington. <laughs> I'm still learning the different areas. So yeah, there's something for everybody and there's so much to discover. To me, like everything's new and there's a lot to discover. So it, it was also an excuse for me to visit the city as opposed to just being in my area and kind of staying there. Oh well, Congra congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, that is uh, Marie Judith Jean Louis. She founded uh, the group, the Toronto Urban Sketchers. The group just published its first book uh, called Urban Sketching: Disappearing Landmarks in Toronto. Right now, it's available on Amazon.com, but soon uh, to come to websites and possibly bookstores closer to you. Thank you so much for coming in.